Hi, welcome to another OXO tutorial uh, by Sam Alger. Um, if you haven't watched any of my other tutorials, I've been programming for, wow, hundreds of years now. I've used almost every language known to man. Um, but all things aside, um, this is a more complex tutorial. We're actually going to develop a game here. Um, it's going to be a quick, small game, nothing serious. but the point of this is to encompass everything I've taught you in previous tutorials, um, how to encompass that and use certain things that I've shown you to make a game. Um, what, what I've noticed and I've had quite a few messages from viewers saying, well I know how to do this and I know how to write a function and I know how to declare it and put a program driver to use it and whatnot but how, how do I loop it properly and, and they know how to do loops and everything but how do they do it properly in such a way that is to make a game and how do games do it because games require quite advanced uh, programming techniques of things you don't even realize you know so um, we're gonna get started with that uh, the first thing we're gonna do here is get our header files in there uh, we know we're gonna be putting the screen and whatnot so uh, I'll stream um, also, I've written this ahead of time because of the complexity of a game, so I already know what's going to go down ahead, uh, ahead of time. But I'm going to explain everything as I type it, um, follow along, uh, review it, look over each and every line as you type it, um, play the game uh, repeatedly, edit it, change certain things, see what if you can get it to do what you'd like to do. Um, it's, it's not a major game, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. This is going to be your first game as a developer, if that's the path you choose to take. Um, so it's definitely something you need to do. This is definitely, every every game programmer's game is uh, just like this one. It's a little more advanced than Hello World. It's got all the basics in there. Um, so you really need to study this, learn what it's doing, things like that. Um, I'm always going to be around. Um, this here using namespace, not the best place to put it, but I'm trying to keep it cleaner for you, so I'll put it out here in the global. Um, now we're going to do, I'm going to co comment code to uh, get in the habit of commenting anything more complex than a few lines, or anything small that you're doing. So what we're going to do here is our prototypes for our functions. show menu function. Now the show menu function is not going to return a value, it's going to show the game's menu, so that's fine. Now it's going to be an integer, yeah, look at that. Um, play the game, and we're going to play the game, we're going to take the game number from the random number generator. If you want to play again, we're going to do a check with that. We use a function to check that. Um, this here is actually an address operator, so we can take the integer from one place without having to pass it all around. Just keep it in one memory location and just keep accessing that location of memory for new values and whatnot. It's um it's not as complex as using a stack and adding and popping functions on and off a stack like a first in first out kind of deal. This is more like an older style, but definitely more easier, something you should learn to do first. Um, and the other method I haven't put in my other tutorials yet, so we're going to go with this one. Now we're going to set some values. And see, the values used to set the game behavior, okay? Now normally what you'd want to do is make a class with functions that can set and get these values or just a simple namespace that you can access and use scope resolution because you always want to protect your data it's part of the object oriented method and it's why C++ is the way it is but I haven't actually taught you how to make namespaces yet which is what I would do I wouldn't do a class for two values it's wasted but a namespace I haven't taught you how to do yet so we're just gonna make it global they can't, they can't be negative numbers, so we're going to go ahead and put unsigned, okay? They're going to be integers. Now, to understand that it's global later in the code, I usually just prefix it with a G underscore. So, I'll, so wherever it goes, I'll know, hey, this was declared globally, all right? So the max number of guesses that the user is going to be allowed. Right, the max number of 
max number of tries if you're going to be allowed to have. Um, I set it to zero now because um, I don't. We don't know the values these yet because we haven't put the menu in and the user hasn't selected what they want. So we're going to set it to zero because um, you don't want to leave anything undeclared, especially when it's global and blah blah blah. Okay, now let's start the driver program. First thing we're going to do is create the menu. here it's going to be on dynamic memory simply because most games are going to be using this format although with a game that's basic int menu equals zero would have been fine I mean could have done it other ways but see because we're going to use the men the, the memory that's because that's how we wrote our function up here if you look we're going to store that value of memory and just keep it there I mean we can access it as we want to so that's going to be the pointer to that address. Now what we want to do, this is something I haven't put in my other tutorials, and I tried finding a way around it, and I spent hours on it, and I couldn't figure it out, so this is this is how it's going to be. I'm going to have to teach you a new function here right quick, it's the random number generator. Now to get, if whenever you create a program and you just access random numbers, that first number you get is always going to be the same. Always. So what you need to do is you have to seed it, you can seed it with any old number, but the number itself has to be random. Now that's the kicker. How can you set a random number seeding a random number generator if it's always going to be the same? So by doing the seed with a non-random number, you're just going to change the number you always get when you start the program, but it's still always going to be the same number, even though it's going to be different. So what we need to do is seed that with something else that's random. Now what might that be, you ask? Well, first of all, if you notice here, it has to be unsigned, and we need to type it unsigned in a typecasted format because we're going to use the clock, and the clock does not return an unsigned number. Or it should because time can't be negative in all due regard. But that's how it's done. So we need to put unsigned time, just like that. Now that did both. This is two different functions. One comes out of the C standard library, and one comes out of C time. You get one guess as to which one comes from where. Anyway, moving on. It playing is one. Now that means the loop is going to always execute as long as the value equals one. So now let's create the game loop. I used a while loop for this. Um, you can use any of the loops as long as you know how to execute it properly. So let's do a while loop. You should know how this is. So as long as playing is equal to one, we're going to stay in the loop. So this is our game code right here. Everything that the game is is going to be right inside these two little brackets. And it's going to look more complex than it really is. Okay. Now we'll get to that after. Now, after that game's over. Right? See, when this is done here, all done. The game is finished. Now, you want to delete the pointer to the random memory up here, and then exit the program. Seems quite small for a game, right? But we're not done yet. Okay, so now let's look in here. Let's get this going. First thing we want to do is use our show menu function. Okay, now the show menu is a pointer to the menu. We're going to use that memory right there. Okay, now we're going to use a switch statement. Okay, so that means now what we've done is we've entered the loop and it's going to stay in there for as long as the game is running. Alright, now we're going to show the menu. We'll, we'll show you this function after, but we're going to pop the menu and we're going to get the return value of that and we're going to store that in the location. Then we use that switch statement to determine what the user chose out of that menu. So, 